I want to do another example of using space-time diagrams to understand situations in special relativity without needing to use any equations to solve those problems. And uh, once again, this is uh, not a video where, I where I'm explaining the space-time diagrams in the first place. I did one of those earlier. Uh, you can look back at it. This is a video where I'm just using it to do some calculations, to do a quick calculation without using equations. Even though I know the equations are hidden underneath behind all this, the, the space-time diagram graph paper you, that's you know, labeled in years on the vertical axis and light years on the horizontal axis, so the speed of light is 45 degree angle going up, and it has hyperbolas printed on it, is the tool that we're going to use to make this happen. Once again, this graph paper, the idea of using this, I've taken from my colleague Tom Moore at Pomona College, uh, who has a set of this graph paper that you can download at his Six Ideas That Shaped Physics textbook website. So have a look. You can find this yourself if you want it, or my class can find it on our course page. So, all right, what are we going to do? Well, I have Alice, our good friend Alice, who continues to stay at home at the origin at rest. The vertical line here is Alice's path, her re path at rest in her own reference frame. This graph is Alice's perspective, Alice's coordinates. And this time, uh, we had Bob going 4 fifths C earlier. We had Carol going 1 tenth C, 1 tenth the speed of light. This time, Alice's friend Diego is going to be traveling at 2 fifths light years per, per year, 2 fifths of the speed of light, again in the plus x direction. So we'll get to compare that to all these other things. Uh, since we know we're using that, I'm going to go ahead and put Diego's path up on the graph here, and as usual, I'm going to make sure that Diego starts at the origin. Uh, we're defining that to be a departure point because for this hyperbolic graph paper, you always have to start at the origin. And I'll just get this graph up here. I don't even know what my question is yet, but I know I'm going to need to be using my graph paper, so I better do this. So let's see, two fifths is going to go through this point, and four tenths this point, and maybe even six fifteenths this point. So let me connect the dots a little. All right. Hopefully I can draw a straight line, huh? Okay, how'd I do? Yeah, I hit the dots. Good. Okay, so this is my path that's going two-fifths times the speed of light. That's my path that Diego is taking. It's the middle path in the graph now. Two-fifths the speed of light. Remember, this, the flatter you go, the faster you go in a space-time diagram. The steeper you go, the slower you go. So two-fifths C is right in the middle of the example as I've done so far. The question this time is a little different than the ones we've considered before. I want to know, Diego left at some pretty, maybe Diego left on his birth date, uh, and he's going to celebrate his birthday 12 years later. When will Diego, uh, so when Diego celebrates his 12 years in transit birthday, how long does Alice think it has been, and how far has Diego gotten? Well, we just need to go on up. Here we know, uh, as usual, we know that because of the space-time interval that everyone agrees on, we know that the interval delta s is equal to delta t, which is, for because his delta x is zero, he thinks it's sitting still. So that's equal to 12 years. I'll say this is delta t as seen by Diego, because delta x as seen by Diego is zero. This is the way we've been using these things all the, way, all, all the way along. And so the good news is I can find that directly on the graph. The 12 year hyperbola is right here. Every line on that hyperbola has a space time interval of 12 years. So when is Diego touching that hyperbola? Well, looks like right about here is the point where Diego hits that hyperbola. So I'm supposed to be estimating now when and where does Alice think he is at that point? Let's take a look. 12 years have passed for Diego. How long does Alice think has passed? Well, I can just look at that intersection of Diego's line with Alice's coordinates. It's a little bit pat with, with, the, with hyperbola. That's a little bit past the 13, going from 13 and a half quarter. I'd say maybe delta t Alice, I think, 
is maybe 13.2 years maybe, something like that, 13.2-ish, um, something in that range. And delta x Alice for that event, Alice's distance that she would read off is a little past 5, 5, maybe I've underestimated that, 13.2, 13.1 here. Um, and this is going to be maybe 5.2 light years, something in that neighborhood, 5.2, 5.25 maybe, it's a little 5.2. We'll just leave it at 5.2. That's what I read off of here. It turns out that when I did this uh, calculation exactly using this equation, using math, uh, using the equation, what I got was 13.1 years, and I got a distance of 5.24 light years. So you can see, even going the other way, counting along Diego's birthdays along the way, one, two, three, every time he's hyperbola, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, counting Diego's twelve birthdays going up there, we find, even just from this graph, very nice agreement with what you'd get using a full calculation, a mathematical calculation. I love these space-time diagrams because they let us do this sort of thing. And while I'm at it, let me throw out one more just fun little tidbit here. Imagine that two-thirds of the way there, uh, at the eight-year point, Diego wanted to send a message back to Alice saying, having a great trip, I'm almost there. What would that look like in this graph? Well, we know that light goes at a 45 degree angle in a space-time diagram. If he's going back toward Alice, it's going in the negative x direction. And it has to be a 45 degree angle. Um, the eight-year hyperbola would be here. If he's going to send a message back, hmm, I'm going to have to eyeball 45 degrees as best I can from that point. Let's see, am I, am I doing OK at this? Not too bad. Not too bad. If I eyeball that 45 degree angle, and send a message back. Uh, I don't know how good that was, but no, that wasn't a very good 45 degree angle. Curses. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad, but let me see if I can get a little steeper. I see what I'm doing wrong now. We can even do e additional calculations, like asking where, w when does that message come back it's going at 45 degrees down from vertical at a slope of minus 1. A light beam message, radio or something going back, would get to Alice at about 12 and a third years or so getting back there. The message would be, would be received at that point. You can do a lot of calculations like that just from a space-time diagram like this to see how this stuff works. So with that, that is, a, I think, a good set of examples to illustrate how you can use space-time diagrams to solve problems in relativity without doing any math.